Hi, welcome to Engineering Q Vectors. This is the fifth course, or the fifth class in the course. We're going to be discussing classical matrices. Q algebra and Q vectors are going to augment classical matrices. But before we get into Q matrices and stuff like that, we need to understand what classical matrices are. Okay, from the previous video, we learned that an AB matrix is the proper result of vector multiplication and division and that an AB matrix is a specific kind of matrix. In this video, we're going to discuss matrices in general, and we're going to show simple explanations of what they are and how to use them. I don't know if these explanations exist in other uh, books or coursework or whatever. This is the way I understand them, uh, that I came up with understanding. I'm going to convey that understanding to you. It's very simple. In the next video, we're going to discuss the AB matrix and Q-algebra in more detail. Okay, what's a matrix? Well, you can look at a matrix as kind of like a machine or a circuit where given a fruit vector, a fruit vector of seven apples, five oranges, and six peaches, well, a matrix takes the vector in from the top and then outputs an output vector to the left. So if we put seven apples in and five oranges here and six peaches here because there's no grape, the grapes are assumed to be zero, then we go down, and this is like a cross point circuit that you would have like in a lot of FPGAs or something like that. And then we go down, it doesn't connect here, 7 doesn't connect here, 7 doesn't connect here, but 7 times 10 gives us 70 grapes out. 5 only connects here, so we get 5 oranges out. Peaches in connects here, so we get 3 oranges out. And grapes, we'd have no grapes, so we get no effect from this guy. So our result, our output vector is going to be zero apples, eight oranges, zero peaches, and 70 grapes. That's our output vector. Okay, and that's the way you can look at what a matrix is and what it does. Matrix, a matrix processes vectors. Vectors have units, and those units are transferred to the output of the matrix, and the important thing to remember is the matrix elements are what I call trans dimensions. In other words, this guy here is not just one, it's one orange per orange in. This guy here is 0 0.5 oranges per peach. Okay, whereas the vector has straight units, the matrix has trans dimensions, and that's what the difference is. Uh, and that's why I, I don't like these other things like MATLAB that treats vectors and matrices as all the same thing. It can't be because matrices process vectors and therefore they have to have different types of units. Uh, trans dimensions I call them as opposed to dimensions. Vectors have dimensions. Here's an alternate representation. This is the way we like to represent it. We, we don't like to show that complicated circuit so we show the, the little cross point ties as numbers in a grid and where there is no cross point connection we have zeros. Okay, And again we show our vector coming in at the top and our result coming out at the left. And we put vectors as a single row or column, doesn't matter, in some places they th say it matters, it doesn't matter to me, where your position in the vector indicates your dimension. So the first one would be apples, the next one would be oranges, or it could be X, Y, Z, etc. Okay, and then the matrix is enclosed in square brackets. That's just a convention. Okay, and vectors are in curly or parentheses. So a matrix is a two-dimensional list of numbers which represent the cross point process I just showed. But now because, you know, this takes up an extra line of space, what we like to do is roll this down the side, put it here, and that way there we can write our matrices just like we write our expressions in a single line. Okay, but when they put it, show it on this side, it's really coming in through the top, and the result is coming out the left. That's just more for compactness, reduce the number of lines, and it looks more like our, the way we would write it. Again, Representing a vector as a horizontal vertical row is simply a choice of convenience. Okay, some, attribute, some people attribute significance to these different forms because of the false beliefs that vectors are matrices of a single row or column. And we'll cover that in more detail in the next video. 
Okay, the concept, now let's talk about matrix operators. The concept of a matrix operator is a misnomer. What's a matrix operator? Well, if I have a matrix M and a matrix W, okay, we're always going to show our variables in parentheses to distinguish them from vectors. You know, we can add those two matrices together. That's kind of a misnomer, and I'll explain why. Because in Q-algebra, it teaches us that matrices only ever operate on vectors. Thus, it's a misnomer for operators to have operators, like matrix add, subtract, multiply, and divide. You can't add and subtract, multiply, and divide, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Now, this is a little, you know, but it, it doesn't matter because the following matrix operators that we're going to show you are actually vector operators, which are transferred to matrix matrices. This is explained. Okay, for the following examples, we're going to use two uh, matrix. We're just going to use two-dimensional matrices to keep this easy. Uh, we're M, and we're just going to put letters instead of numbers in so we can show the algebra that goes on with it. And again, um, Q algebra matrix variables are enclosed in brackets just to distinguish them from vectors. Okay, and so what we do when we do matrix addition, we're not really adding the matrices. What we're saying is our resultant vector D is the first matrix M multiplied by A plus, okay, because this A is going in the top and it's coming out the right as a vector. This A is going in the top of this matrix and it's coming out the left, I'm sorry, the left as a vector. So we're actually summing the two vectors that result from these matrices multiplied by a vector. That's what we're summing. We're summing the results of the matrices. This is shown over here, and I'm showing the M and W, the A from the A, the AX, the X component of A coming down one column, the Y component of A coming down another column. Okay, and you can, you can pretty much do the math yourself. Okay, the result of the vector DX is the result of uh, A times the X component of A uh, plus B times the Y component of A. Okay, plus, plus the E component the E times the X component of A plus F times the Y component of A. I know it kind of, you get the idea, you can look at this, it's pretty simple. So what we're really doing here is adding the resultant vectors from the matrix operating on the vector A. That's really what we're doing. But what we can do to simplify it is if we take these expressions we just got by going through this circuit here, okay, if we take the x's and put them together, we get A and E. If we take the y's, put them together, we get BF, and we do that for the y column. Then we can actually, by summing the A to the E, the, the, the like components of each matrix, we can have the same effect if we just add the coefficients of the two matrices together. And that's how we're basically transferring what's really going on in vector space into the matrix. And so matrix addition is pretty simple. You just add the, the two like components or the two same position elements. So you know, the upper left hand corner gets added to the upper left hand corner and goes to the upper left hand corner, etc., through all the components. And that's what vector ad, uh, matrix addition is. Okay, matrix. Um, oh, and the other thing, they have to be like matrices too. In other words, these have to have the same trans dimensions before you can add them. But in this particular case, we're saying that they do. Matrix subtraction works the same way. You just subtract, if, if it's M minus W, you take the A, subtract the E, take the B, subtract the F, take the C, subtract the G, take the D, subtract the H, and put them in the appropriate locations of the resultant matrix. Okay, so, so you know, so basically instead of doing, uh, you know, A times M minus W times A ah. Ah. to get our result D. We're saying that D can also be found by M minus W times A. So we're just, instead of doing it in vector space, we're doing it in matrix space. It works out the same. And the reason why I go through all this, well, I'll explain when you get there. So matrix multiplication um, seems is actually the same thing. It's it's similar to it's similar to combining the operations. And let me explain here. If A is going into the top of W, and from W you get an output 
vector going to the left, which then goes into the input of M to come out the left side as resulting D. Okay, so what you have here is you have a chain reaction, A being processed by W, the result then being processed by M, and that result is D. Okay, so what we want to do is combine M and W so that we can just say into U, so where U is equal to some combination or function of M and W, such that we can just do it in one shot instead of, you know, going one into the other and then out. We're going through one. And let me show you what this looks like pictorially, which I just showed here. I'm showing it again graphically here. Okay, we can do, we can figure out how to do matrix multiplication right from this diagram here. Okay, if we just say, well, okay, our X output is going to be A, if we just work backwards through, A times E times X, which is the X component of the vector, plus A times F times Y, plus B times G times X, plus B times H times Y. And we do that for the next line. And then we collect these like X components. We get AEBG, AFBH, CEDG, and CFDH here. And that's how we can do, that's the, basically all you're doing when you do matrix multiplication. You're just combining this two-step process into one. Okay, and let me show you the distinctly simplified method because this look a little bit confusing. If you take this and put it here and take this one and put it here, and where these two line up, okay, you do AE plus BG. Where these two line up, you say AFBH plus BH. And again, this one would be CEDG, and this one would be CFDH. And that's the way you can do matrix multiply. A much simpler way to keep track of it, because when you try to do it with the method you learn in college, it's a very convoluted mess. But if you look at it this way, it's actually quite easy. So matrix divide. Again, because operators can't have operators, there is no formal matrix divide. However, there is matrix invert, which provides the reciprocal process to stand in for what would be normal matrix division. When we get to Q-algebra, we're going to show you matrix division um, using a reciprocal process like this as well. And basically what we're saying is if we had matrix M divided by matrix W, which you really can't do for reasons we'll get into Q-algebra, because this guy here, uh, your divide is either left or right. And when you just have a straight bar like this, you don't know if the divide is left or right. So this is ambiguous from a lot of other standpoints. So what we do instead, we're saying, is what we're going to do then is take W, take the reciprocal of W and multiply it by M. That's going to be the equivalent of trying to do this, where the way you define the reciprocal of W is if you were to process A times W, then what matrix would you process that result by to get back to A? So this matrix would undo this W. So these would be reciprocal processes. Okay, and so when you do M divided by W, we're assuming this is a left divide because it's on this side, then when we do M divided by W, we take the, whatever matrix fits this definition for the reciprocal of W is what we multiply, we put in our multiplication chain like we did before to get the resultant vector. And that's how we're going to affect matrix divide. But in Q algebra, um, if this is on the right, or on the left, or left or right, is going to make a difference in your answer. And so we need to come up with more, uh, more, uh, more rigorously defined divide operators to keep track of are these divides on the left or the right. Okay, matrix transpose. It's pretty easy. Um, we're going to explain in the next video why it's important to us. Right now, I'm just going to explain to you what it is. In matrix transpose, if you just draw a line down the main diagonal, Okay, and then you flip this guy so that now that one, two, three, instead of going horizontal, is now going vertically down, then you've basically flipped this matrix. That's called a matrix transpose. It's represented by putting a superscript T on your matrix. And we'll explain why that's important in the next video. I just want to explain that that's a standard matrix operator. Okay, the operators listed in this video represent those which are important to Q algebra. Um, we're going to cover more operators when we get into Q-algebra. They're Q-algebra specific. 
I think classical uh, matrices have other operators that are not of importance to us right now, so we're not going to spend time on them. Okay, but let's look at some special types of matrices. Uh, a scalar matrix is an important matrix to Q-algebra. What's a scalar matrix? Well, if I take the, the vector A and I multiply it by the scalar 5, I get a now a vector that's five times bigger than A. The result D, the resultant D vector is now going to be five times bigger than A. So I've scaled up the matrix A. That's called a scalar. It scales. Okay, the problem is, is this isn't the proper way to represent a scalar. The proper way to represent a scalar, and this is what we learn in Q-algebra later, uh, is with a scalar matrix, which we represent in Q-algebra as a, a scalar in a parentheses because it's really a matrix where the main diagonal has all the fives. It has the same outcome as this because if you put x, y, and z into your matrix, x is going to come out 5x, y is going to come out 5y, and z is going to come out 5z. So it's the same thing as this, except this is the more appropriate way of representing it. And we'll cover that when we get to Q-algebra. And so this is the same thing I'm showing here. This is what that means. Okay, and so we represent, um, we, we now allow, for just note simplification, we understand that that is really a matrix, even though it doesn't have the parentheses on it. That's a shorthand notation now for scalar matrix. This is the preferred notation, but it saves a lot of typing not to have to put the parentheses around it. Okay, so for here forward, when you multiply five times an A, this is really a matrix. And that'll become more apparent when we get more into Q algebra. Okay, the unity matrix is a scalar matrix of one. It, in classical stuff they call identity matrix, which always pisses me off because I don't, why not just call it a unity matrix? Why do we have to call it the identity matrix? So I'm simplifying it. We're just going to call it a unity matrix because it's a scalar matrix of value one. Okay, we're going to get, we need the I though. We don't want to be using I because we have a lot of current in electrical engineering. We don't want to be using the variable I when we have a lot of current to be modeling. So we're going to go and use the number one in parentheses in brackets to represent a unity matrix, which is formally called the identity matrix. All right, let's do a recap. We explained what matrices are, how to use them. We explained basic matrix operators, and we explained scalar and unity matrices. Uh, next video, we're going to be getting into the AB matrix and the uh, interesting properties of the AB matrix. Thank you.